Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. This is, I believe, part six of our Editing Your Photos series. So remember, if you have a photo that you want to send in, I, the, the email to send that photo to is here on the screen. I generally try and do about one photo. Right now, if you send a photo in, the chances that I will get to it within a week or two are, uh, is pretty high. Feel free to send in your photos and when you send in your photo feel free to add in your Instagram or your Twitter whatever you use for social media and I can always plug you on this video as well because you guys are important. So today we're looking at this photo from Ralph who lives in Germany but was on vacation in the States and ended up coming across this here snake. Now Ralph I hope you were being safe when you took this shot. His question was about this stick right here that goes through the middle of the snake's face and how to remove that. Now you may notice that I've gone ahead and found these two images online and the reason I did that is because I'm going to try and use these images to help me get rid of this stick right here. So I'm in raw therapy, but before I do my raw therapy edits, what I'm actually gonna do is just go ahead and click this open an external editor button, and that will open things in GIMP. Okay, so here we are in GIMP, and I'm just gonna go ahead and du duplicate my photo here, hitting Control Shift D, and I'm gonna right click on both of these and add an alpha channel. It's just something I like to do. With the top image selected, I'm gonna I'm going to add a new layer, Control Shift N, and just make sure that my fill width is set to transparency and click OK. Next, let's go ahead and grab our clone brush tool and let's zoom in by hitting Shift and the plus button. So I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to start grabbing some of this area. Let me make my brush a little bit bigger and let me bring the hardness down and the force up. So the hardness is how hard the edge between the edge of your brush and the center of the, your brush and then the force is how much is applied. It's kind of like the opacity for the brush, although there is an actual opacity slider. So be aware of that. And so I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and click right here and just kind of start to paint, paint around this twig. And you can see I'm, I'm just kind of, this is a lot of trial and error. So kind of just keep painting. I don't know if any of you ever watched Bob Ross. If you did, let me know in the comments down below. But uh, I got into art because of good old Bob and his series, The Joys of Painting. Now I'm running into trouble here. Uh, as I'm painting because the color here and the color here is different. So I'm gonna get rid of that switch over to my healing tool. I'll link to the description in the description down below to my tutorial on the heal tool and the clone tool. Okay, now I know that this twig kind of comes up here and ends, but I'm gonna leave it where it's at because the less that we try and mess with this image the better and I don't think that people are really going to notice this. It might look like uh, the depth of field in this image has gone ahead and made it disappear. Okay, now I'm going to come up here. This time what I'm going to do is increase my brush size with my bracket key and then grab somewhere very near and I'm going to increase the hardness as well and then grab somewhere very near the twig and you can see that looks better but the hardness needs to be harder. Something like that. Okay, I'm gonna bring the hardness back down. That and kind of paint it away. Oops. And then I'm gonna decrease my brush size. See if I can stay too long in one spot. Let me grab the heel tool. Let's go ahead and kind of brush that away and switch back to the clone tool. So I, since I can't really see how the snake's head looks, I'm not really sure how the, the back of the snake is supposed to connect to the snake's head, especially when the snake is in this position uh, while it's feeding. But I feel like that's a pretty good compromise. And then let me grab the heel brush again and let's just go ahead, oh, first I'm gonna grab the clone tool and grab right there. Do my best to kind of to just paint away uh, paint away the twig as best as I can. Now, I've actually deleted the eye here, and that's okay, because we're gonna add it back in. And last but not least, I'll grab the heel brush again and get rid of this. Now hit Control Shift J, zoom out. Okay, now you might be saying to yourself, well, now we have a one-eyed snake, and you wouldn't be wrong. I can also see that this twig does look a little bit strange, but it's not terrible. And of course, we have done all of this cloning on this new layer, so if I turn it off, we've got everything right back where it started. This is completely non-destructive. 
Next, I'm going to go ahead and open up what I think might work. I think this snake looks very similar to this one. So I'm going to drag and drop this photo over my, my current photo. And I'm actually going to turn off the new layer here. And then I'm going to invert this photo. So I'm going to come here to Layer and Transform and Flip Horizontally because I want the eye to be going the right way. And then I'm going to turn down the opacity a little bit and then hit Shift-T and let's go ahead and move this into place. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the snake's eye and try and line up corner of the eye. This particular angle is pretty good. So uh, then I am going to grab the edge here and I'm going to try and just shape this eye, give a little more perspective to it. Actually, I think something like that looks pretty, pretty right. Okay. Uh, and now let's go ahead and add in a layer mask and choose white for full opacity and click add and then choose my brush by hitting P on the keyboard, switch the color to black and then I'm just making sure my force is at 100. I'm just going to paint around this eye because that's all that I want. Now that I've painted around the eye, um, I can alt click on the layer mask and then just hit F on my keyboard and surround the area that I do want and then hit enter, hit control I to invert that selection. Shift B to grab my paint bucket tool and then that way I don't have to just spend a lot of tedious time going around and, and painting out all of the white that would be in that layer mask. And then just alt click on the layer mask again and you can see that we actually have what looks to be a fairly good looking eye. Now I'm going to hit P on my keyboard again and I'm just going to continue to erase around this because I'm really only interested in the eye. So the first thing that we can notice is there's a, a lot of noise in the image. The next thing that we notice is that our eye image here is looking pretty light compared to the rest of the snake. Uh, and then the other thing is uh, the coloring is different. So the first thing that I'm going to do is duplicate. Control Shift D. Duplicate that image and turn off the bottom image. And actually I'm going to move that down here. I always keep kind of a record of the images in different states. Uh, on the bottom of my layers just so that if I ever want to go back to a different stage I can. Next I'm going to come here to the colors and hue saturation actually colors and hue chroma and I'm going to kind of play with the hue and the chroma and the lightness so I think this is a little too bright so I'm going to bring the brightness down a little bit. I'm going to bring the chroma down as well and you can see almost immediately we get a much better result and then the hue we can kind of move it back and forth until I feel like those colors fit a lot better and we just keep playing with it. Okay, so this is kind of what I came up with. Now, I don't I feel like these oops, I feel like these scales here are not the right size, so I would be better erasing them from the image. All right. Let me go ahead and zoom out. Control Shift J and select something else. And actually, from this far out it doesn't look too bad. Let me zoom back in here. One thing that we could do is come here to the exposure and I find that playing with the exposure and the black level can also help a little bit. And actually I feel like that's a pretty good color match. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add in some noise here and to do that I'm going to hit Control shift n to add in a new layer and I'm going to fill that layer with black. Shift B and then go ahead and paint bucket that layer in there. Next, I'm going to I'm going to select the layer mask, hit Control A and Control C, and then I'm going to select that new layer, uh, add a new layer mask, and then hit Control V and anchor that into place. And it's a little bit. Hmm, let's see here. Go ahead and move that into place. This is one thing I wish that GIMP would do better with is adding layer masks and then I can just use the lasso tool to grab all of this extra area and hit shift B and get rid of it. Okay now it looks like our snake has a black eye. Filters, noise, and I'm going to add in some pearl noise and go ahead and bring the randomness back to something like um, yeah, something like that and the repeat. Okay and then I'm going to come up here to colors and desaturate and desaturate that and then I just have to go and grab my mode turn that layer mode into a screen and we can see that there's been 
there's been noise that's been added, but it's much too bright. So then let's go ahead and just bring the opacity back, something like that. And then I'm going to grab my eye layer one more time and come up here to filters, noise, and go to pick. And that looks about good to me. Okay. So now let me go back. This is what we started out with, and this is where we are now. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just hit Control M and merge layers, and then I'm going to export this, Control Shift E. I wanna export this as a TIFF and click export, and no compression and export. So now we've got our image and I can open it up in raw therapy. And let's go ahead. You can see there's kind of a ghost of a line there that I wasn't really able to get rid of, but I feel like this looks a lot better than it did. Not that your image was bad, Ralph. I think it's an amazing image. I, I've had the same issue where there's just that one thing that's right where I don't want it to be. So let's go ahead and do the color grading here. I'm gonna start out by just adding some black back into the image a little bit, um, brightening it up just a hair. And then let's go ahead and add some saturation, maybe something like that. I'm gonna have to be careful of these leaves that they don't end up taking over the image. Next, uh, let's turn on some sharpening and some local contrast. Now the reason that I have edited the image first and I'm doing color corrections later is because it was gonna be easier for me to match the color of the eye to the original image than it was gonna be to a really saturated image. Once you do the image processing and you delete what you're going to delete and things like that. You can always go back and do a final color pass to add a little bit more into the image. Okay, now let's go ahead and come here. I'm going to add, turn on the soft light, which I find to be a very pleasing effect. What I'm going to go with some color toning and I'm just going to warm this up just a little bit, something like that. And the reason I'm doing that is because when I think of a rattler, I think of desert, I think of, um, you know, kind of that arid climate. And so I think it's having a little bit of a warmer warmer tones will bring out more of that feeling uh, but what i am going to do is i feel like i like the i like this orange tone but it's a little much for me so so i'm just going to back it off a little bit to something about like that last but not least let's go ahead and come in here to noise reduction let's zoom in and let's go ahead and come to the noise reduction tab and I'm going to leave the mode on conservative and let's just go ahead and increase that luminance slider and come over here. You know, it might be better to go to aggressive. Go ahead and increase the luminance quite a bit and then adjust the gamma to where you feel like it works. And then let's go ahead and bring that luminance back and increase some detail recovery. Turn it off, turn it on. Um, so generally, I just leave the chrominance on automatic global. It is actually doing the chrominance noise reduction automatically when I do that. And last but not least, let's go ahead and add in a median filter to iteration. So let me go ahead and turn that off. Mm, I feel like that's a little too much. Okay, so there we go. This is our final image. Rolf, thank you so much for sending this in. It was a great challenge. I really appreciated it. Um, I like looking at the image from this far out because uh, I don't see, see so many of my mistakes. I hope that this was helpful to you in trying to think about how to edit some images. If this has been helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if it hasn't been helpful, why don't you do the same? Uh, if you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate it. I hope you guys are staying safe and I will see you next time.